Welcome to the Nehemiah Entrepreneurship Community Podcast. I'm your host, Patrice Saguet. Uh, actually, by the way, we are going to be changing our name to the, the Nehemiah Lifecycle Podcast in the next couple of weeks. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but for now, we're the, the Nehemiah Entrepreneurship Community Podcast. I have a good friend with us here in the studio, uh, my good friend, preeminent, the illustrious, <laughs> His Excellency, Michael Pink. Michael, good to have you, man. Thanks for being hey, here. Good to be here with you, my brother. Always good. We've been friends now for a good while. I'm trying to figure out when we first met. But good, at least 15 years. Yeah, I would say I, at least. I, yeah, at least 15 years. And, you know, uh, Michael, first of all, um, you know, they, they always say, be careful. Don't meet your heroes. They may disappoint you. That was not the case for you, my friend. That's true, because when I met you, you were everything I thought you'd be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, so some of you guys know the, the name of the book, uh, uh, Selling Among Wolves, right? I mean, that's just one of many. Yep. Uh, um, and, and, you know, a lot of people know you from that, but there's others. There's the Bible Incorporated. Mm -hmm. There's right? Rainforest Strategy. There's Rainforest Strategy. Now, that one is... That one is like, uh, how do you call it? It's like a PhD. Yeah, it's... Uh, wouldn't, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, it, this is right here. And it is, uh, it's the study of God's laws, his natural law, as it pertains to business. I am telling you. So, I mean, you, you were one of the early pioneers, preeminent in terms of just at a national level in America, kind of incorporating... Bible and business. Uh, let's go back a little bit, Michael. How easy or tough was that? Give me a bit about your journey. Because sure. you were doing it when when some of us were learning, were learning, were in Bible school. Yeah, uh, <laughs> sure. It, it began it, it, the the real trek into actually doing it as a as a, a calling, if you will, was in. Um, it came in in, in 1988. I had started a business. And I was not doing well. I was struggling in a big way. And I was at church on a Sunday night. And the pastor was preaching a sermon. And he had this comment that he just sort of threw out there. He said, instead of asking God to bless what you're doing, why don't you ask God what he's doing, what he's blessing, and do that? And so I thought, well, God, what are you blessing? What, what is that thing? And he spoke to me, Psalm 68, 11. Well, I didn't know what that said. But it, it says, the Lord gave the word, and great was the company of them that published it. Mm. And I said, you want me to publish your word, like the Bible or something? <laughs> like, wh what do you mean? And uh, I have a, a, a copy of, of this book here. This is, this is the product of that. It's called The Bible Incorporated in Your Life, Job, and Business. And it, I said, because I said to him, give me an idea, and I'll do it. And so I got an idea to publish, to write this book. And it's, I didn't really write it in, in the sense of my own words. I, I compiled scripture in a conversational narrative format on 101 working business topics. And we self-published it. We ordered 25,000 copies that look just like this, leather bound, brass corners, gold edges, gift wrap, 25,000 to my basement. I had no distribution outlet. I had no outlet whatsoever. The printer called me and said, are you sure you want 25,000 copies? The average book in America by established publishers never sells more than 5,000 copies. And you want 25,000 to your house? Well, I didn't know those numbers. So I put my hand over the phone. I said, Lord, I didn't know that. What, what, what do you say? And he told me, no, it's good. We're, we're good. So I said, okay, no, I'll order the 25,000. But the thing is, Patrice, I didn't have the money to pay for the books. I didn't have enough money to pay for the shipping, let alone the books. But I figured it was going to work out. And my plan was to sell enough books before the bill came due to pay for them. It was only a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> back, back then. <laughs> yes, back then. And so, as it turned out, long story short, I had managed to sell enough books in advance to pay the bills and get going. And we sold out of those twenty-five thousand in the first eight months, and then we did another twenty-five, another twenty-five, and so on and so on. It's been hundreds of thousands of copies since then. And so that kind of got me launched. And but. but what I was wanting was the idea of incorporating scripture. Like, what does God say about advertising? What does he say about marketing? What does he say about sales? What does he say about 101 different topics? 
just his word unfiltered. That's what I wanted. And that's what that book is. And that was my foray into that field. And then I've done, as you know, many books since then. But I realized because when I was a young man in sales, I would go to the bookstore trying to find something that would teach me God's ways. But I don't care where you went. The Christian bookstore was like, no, we don't. That's business, man. You got to go to Barnes and Nobles for that. <laughs> you know, you go to Barnes and Noble and, and any of the Christian authors that I came across, you wouldn't know they were Christian unless you, you know, somehow knew the guy personally because th there was no overt uh, teaching about, you know, being biblical or anything. So the Bible Incorporated was my first foray into, let's say, guess what? The Bible says this. Here's what the word of God says. And I launched in into that. And that was the beginning of so many things, including selling among wolves without joining the pack, which is biblical strategies pulled from scripture and all kinds of marketing and other aspects come from that. And I've been doing that ever since. Wow. And you've been endorsed by the likes of Zig Ziglar, yep. Peter Wack. I mean, not Peter Wagner. Well, Peter <laughs> Wagner gave Peter. me an endorsement too. Oh, Peter Wagner. That's right. Peter Wagner. Peter uh, Daniels. Way, interesting. Peter Wright, like a year or two before he died. Interesting interaction there. Peter Daniels. I mean, some of the, some of the greats. So um, let me go to Zig Ziglar. Did you know Z Ziglar personally? Well, I, I came to know him. Yes. Uh, what? I, so how was that? I mean, he's, I mean, he was uh, one of you. the, it's like uh, walking with Billy Graham. Let me tell you in the seventies, when I was a young salesman, one of the books my boss gave me to read was called see you at the top by Zig Ziglar. And so I, I remember reading that motivational book back in 1978, I think it was somewhere around there, 79, something. And so I was aware of that. Then many years later, many years later, I'm invited to speak on the Get Motivated stage. And Zig Ziglar, uh, Robert Schuler, and a bunch of other guys are all speaking on the stage in front of thousands of people. And that's when I got to meet Zig. And we shared the stage in Sacramento, in Seattle, and uh, some other places. I'm trying to remember all the places. It was three different ones that we did. And in that process, he said, hey, will you come to my office and do like lead my team in a devotional? And so I got there and I was teaching them biblical principles for selling. And Zig was on the front row and he was taking copious notes. And I was like, no, 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 you should be up here. Let me take the notes. <laughs> and, and then a little while. So we, we got a friendship going and uh, a number of things that happened that built that friendship. Uh, he was very kind. He reached out to my wife before she passed away in a very personal way. It was beautiful. And then he wrote the, uh, the forward to my book, Rainforest Strategy. Wow. Um, you know, so yeah, that's that was the relationship there. And so we made a personal connection as well. And I really, really enjoyed him. He's a good, good man. Oh, that's incredible. I'm gonna ask you, interesting, you're Canadian born. Yes. Uh, so something about Canadians. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of, whether it's Hollywood, whether it's media, whether it's, you know, What's this thing about Canadians that are able that are able to somehow sneak to the top in the United <laughs> States? What is it, man? You know, I don't know. Uh, I, I say that, you know, I'm a Canadian by birth. I'm American by choice and I'm Southern by the grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. But, um, you know, I think there's there's a, an, an ethic that we have as a work ethic that was incorporated into us. And, and I also believed that I somehow grew up with the idea that you could do anything and be anything. In fact, as a young man, I mean, as a teenager, still in school, I thought I might grow up to be the president of the United States. I didn't know you had to be an American at the time. So, ah, ah. you know, but you just think, well, anything is possible, at least I did, and you work hard. And then I found out that when you come down to the States, people seem to appreciate uh, Canadians. They appreciated that. And there was an interest nice. there. Unlike so American well. born. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, it, it, you're it was nice. Good. Pardon me? Canadians are nice, unlike American borns. Oh, <laughs> Canadians are very nice and very polite. Uh, yeah. And, uh, and, you know, they're adventurous. <laughs> and so um, I love adventure. Wow, that, that's key because, you know, uh, another friend of mine who's also, I got two other friends who are Canadian born. Um, another Peter, uh, get motivated. Um, yeah, yep. Peter yeah. Hall. Peter, Peter Lowe? Lowe, another Peter, and then my friend out of DC, I forgot his name, but anyway, he just rose, just rise to the top, man. Something about Canadians. 
So, so uh, Michael Pink will be with us at our next global forum uh, on marketing sales from a kingdom perspective. You're not yet signed up for that. You want to do that right now. Uh, Gaylord, I see you. Good to see you, member. It's been a long time, Gaylord. You got to re-engage. Uh, so if you want to sign up for this upcoming global forum, uh, visit our website, nehemiahecommunity.com. Go to the events page. You can sign up there and connect and, 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 and join us for the next global forum. Mike, let's talk marketing. Yeah. So you so let's first start with this idea of selling among wolves without joining the pack. Obviously, for those who know scripture, you 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 the framework of that comes from Jesus' statement uh, that we should be uh I send you out as lambs among wolves, among wolves. As doves and wise as serpents. So, so let's talk about that. How do you make sure that you as a bis as a kingdom company that you're able to you know, have amazing marketing strategy without joining the pack, without adapting worldly, worldly methods. What are the keys to that? Well, you know, first of all, I think it begins with a decision. And and people, it says in Proverbs uh, 13, I can't give you the verse right now, but it 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 talks about the person who despises the word and it and not having a good outcome. And the word despise, you think, well, I don't know somebody who despises it so much, but what it means is it count it as, insignificant and so what i have seen in the marketplace christian and otherwise they think the word of god is insignificant relative to business relative to life that it really only has to do with eternal matters and salvation and maybe some behavior things whatever and so i i disagree i think the, the word of god uh, is an authority on anything and everything it touches Amen. And so uh, i'm i'm a big believer in that so i don't i recognize there is a certain amount of pressure to conform to the way the world does things. There are people that are making millions of dollars a week, a month or whatever. Say, oh, I want to do it like that guy. But I submit to you that knowledge or information in, in the Bible compares it to water. It's not so much like you eat a steak and spit out the bones, as people like to say. What you're doing is you're drinking from a fountain that has some strychnine in it, has a little bit of pollution in it. It's like drinking from the Mississippi River. You wouldn't want to do that. Mm. You know, and, and so what I there is a now let me be clear. I can learn from anybody. I don't need to make sure a guy is a Christian when I'm saying, "What's the? Where's the nearest Walmart?" <laughs> you know, I, I, I you want to fix my car? You know, I, an honest guy. I don't. It doesn't matter what his beliefs are in that respect. But what I'm saying is, when you're having somebody shape your your psyche and shape the way you view the world. I mean, I was listening to a guy the other day, two days yesterday, and he was talking about a, a basically a deceptive practice that he teaches because it's so effective and he said it's okay because nobody's really being harmed so he was basically saying it doesn't matter that you're not being honest because really you're kind of lying to help them and so you know and i think no 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 i don't have to do that mm -hmm. and so i think that here's the thing patrice as you know when you discover how god does things there isn't a better way it's not like god says look this is the way i do it i know it's not as good as that guy no, it is the best way. And there are shortcuts people take. I heard about a, a drug that uh, people started to take uh, that helps them dramatically improve the recall and the memory. Like, I mean, it's amazing. The downside is, uh, apparently, that you can't forget things, number one. And number two, you lose your social skills. So there's wow. a, there's a, there's a, a, they're like you can't really relate emotionally to somebody that you got great recall now, but you lose something else. And so what happens in business is sometimes we learn a way of doing things. And but we with that, we take on a practice or a mindset that is counter to the teachings of Christ. And there is nothing that trumps or competes with the ways of God. I've proven that many, many times in many, many ways. And I don't mean just a little bit by a, a large amount. And so. You got to, I think, anybody that's listening to this, if you will follow what Patrice teaches, it teaches these biblical truths. When you follow those things, it is the best. There is nothing better. Now you say, well, I know a guy who made a lot of money yesterday. Yeah, and they arrested him today. <laughs> okay. So, you know, Jesse James robbed banks, but that isn't a good way to make a living. So you have to, in my opinion, say, Lord, how do you do things and show me that? And boy, have I got a lot to share with you about marketing when you're ready. Oh, wow. I love it. So so, so let's go back to this idea of joining the, joining the pack because you, you, 
you are among the top performers in marketing in the United States. So you've modeled yourself. You, you're among the top motivational speakers. You, you've not joined the path. Let's talk a bit about the cost of that. Is there is there cost to having these guardrails that ensures you don't join the pack? And of course, the benefits are clear. You talked about them. Let's talk about the, the cost. Have, have has Michael Pink have to give up some stuff for not joining the pack? That's a, a great question. I know that generally speaking, there is a price people pay uh, when they want to be promoted by the powers that be. There's somebody's ring you got to kiss on the way up. I don't do that. And so there are shortcuts that you can take, but they're they're deleterious to you. They're they're harmful to you. So I I can I'm just trying to re- think of some of the times when I thought I could do that and take a quick shortcut to the top, but there's a there's a price that is extracted. It's a piece of my soul for lack of a better way of doing things. Um, and so when you say, okay, like I, I've gone to a corporation, they say to me when I was doing some training for a fortune 100 company, just before I went on stage, they said, now, listen, whatever you do, do not mention the name of Jesus. Now I wasn't, it wasn't in my talk plan to do that, but I was really taken back by that. I went to the restroom real quick and I said, Lord, what do you want to do here? I, I'm, you're the audience I'm trying to please. And he told me how to navigate that because it, it, I wasn't there to preach a sermon about Jesus, but I did it in such a way that there was hardly a dry eye in the place. And I heard them say when it was over, it felt like they were at a, a revival meeting and they felt the, the presence of God come into that place. But, you know, there are times when you when you say, I'm going to do it this way, that other people will say, I don't want anything. I don't want you. And so, yeah, you will get rejected on occasion, but I don't care. Uh, you know, um, there are opportunities that I will miss by by simply because I don't intend to obfuscate the one who gave me everything that I have. And I I personally feel for me, this is me. I don't tell anybody else what to do. But for me, we and you have a, an idea of what he's given me. I'm wanting to tell people, let me tell you where I got this. I'm not that special. I'm an ordinary guy, Canadian, yeah, but I'm by birth. But I'm I'm made of the same stuff you're made of. But what I have is something extraordinary. Do not attribute the brilliance of that to me personally and to my intellect. Attribute Mm. the brilliance of that to the one who enlightened me in the first place. And that's what I'm here to do. And so I think there is a price to pay. Some people will tell you, you can't come in and say this. And you either say, well, if that's the rule, I'm either not going to go or... Uh, you know, maybe you say, well, Lord, what do you want me to do? And how do you want me to proceed? And I follow that. But I always respect the places where I'm I'm at. I mean, I've been told, do not proselytize in this place. But while there, had 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 incre- miracles. I mean, two people within hours of dying, they're, 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 the staff came to me and said, we know you're a Christian. Will you pray for them? And I fell to my knees and prayed like I've never prayed before at that point in time. And both of them were raised out of a coma and they're about a month apart, just so you know, a couple months apart, but, and, and popped up and said, can I go home? And, wow. you know, so word still gets out and uh, so you just have to learn how to navigate those things. But for me personally, I'm aware that there are certain opportunities that I won't have, but I don't care because I work for him and say, Lord, where do you want me to go? And if you want me on that opportunity, you tell me how to navigate it. And, and that's kind of how I, how I proceed. So I, I love it. I love it. The scripture that comes to mind as as um, as Michael is talking is is Proverb uh, eight sixteen eight. Better a little with righteousness than fast revenue without justice. Listen, if you want to know more about Michael, he does have a website. Uh, I mean, his website is full of good information. It's just simply michaelpink.com michaelping.com and that's kind of where i'm drawing some of these questions for michael good to see you marion marion is one of our trainers and coaches center director out of uh out of puerto rico uh again michael will be with us uh on the at our upcoming global forum mm-hmm. uh you have the opportunity on the 24th of april where he will be uh speaking we'll do it live we'll do q a on zoom 
where you'll get a chance to learn from Michael about kingdom strategies and marketing. So with that, Michael, let's talk about that a little bit. So what is the difference? You know, kingdom marketing on sales versus worldly. What are some key differentiators that you would say this falls in this bucket, this falls in that bucket? Well, let me, good question. Um, there are plenty of people that are in the world that have discovered, stumbled upon the ways of God without necessarily even knowing it's that, and therefore without giving any attribution to it. So, for example, when I was studying the way God does marketing in nature, how does he do that? Well, you have a, a, an apple tree and it puts out a blossom. Okay. And so in, it does that because it needs to pollinate so it can continue the franchise and grow the business, the apple business. And so what it must have is initially the customer it's looking for is a bee. And that bee has got to be attracted to it. So what is the process that the tree goes through to attract the bee to do the pollinating? Well, first of all, from a great distance, that tree, this beautiful tree with all these green leaves, puts out this rush of pink flowers or white flowers on the tree. And so the first thing that bee sees from a, from a, I don't know, a few hundred yards away, he notices, wait a minute, that is a tree. So it's got his attention. Okay. There's a visual thing that got his attention and he knows that he's looking for flowers. Now bees like certain color flowers, birds like another kind. There's some things like that, but let's say it's the right color, a pink flower and the bees heading over there because he, he says that got my attention. Okay. Then when he gets there, because if he doesn't see it, if your ad doesn't attract somebody's attention, if you haven't with a headline, an image, or some kind of pattern pattern interrupt got their attention, you're never going to get to the sale. So mm. I got to get their attention. But the next thing is the bee gets within a certain distance of it, close by, it now has got to pass the sniff test or the smell test. And it got a very acute sense of smell. Okay, so it, it smells it. So now what in your line of mark, work, what can you do now that I've got somebody's attention? How can I get them to, how can I pass the smell test? Maybe I'm going to give them a, uh, you know, some information. or I'm going to give them something that maybe there'll be a video. There'll be something that they'll say, this feels or smells right. It passes the smell test. Now, what happens in nature that pe people don't know about, you want to talk about marketing. Do you know what certain flowers like the primrose will do? When a primrose, catch this, when a primrose, not just that, but that's just one example. When they hear a bee buzzing, and you say, well, how can they hear? They don't have ears. They sense when a bee is buzzing, and they can duplicate this in a lab. So what happens is when the primrose senses there's a bee kind of checking out the flowers here, it immediately uh, increases the amount of nectar as quick as it can possibly produce it by about 20%. Because it gives off a stronger odor and it's basically saying, hey, Mr. B, I see you're looking at some flowers. If you buy mine now, why heck, I'll even give you this. And he adds it. There's a bonus that's added to it. It actually produces a bonus for the bee to incentivize it to take action right then and there. So you see that. So the bee, first of all, must see it, catches attention. Then it's got to pass the smell test and then he tastes it. It's got to pass the taste test. What does that look like in business? Maybe I'm going to give them a free sample. Maybe I'm going to give them a download. I'm going to give them something, a, a, a seven-day trial, 30-day trial, something to pass the taste test. And that three-step process of a, catching my attention, uh, gaining my interest with a smell test, and then and then the taste test, uh, which the taste test does this. It, it magnifies in a big way desire. Mm. So I've gone from attention and interest to desire and now if it's something I want, I'm going, to act, I'm going to act on it. Well, that process was actually first championed by a man born in the 1800s, was one of the fathers of advertising in the early 1900s. His name was uh, Elmo, St. Elmo. Uh, I can't remember his whole name, but part of it is St. Elmo. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I don't know that he understood it from nature. I was studying nature, studying the way God does things, and how does he get the bee to do it? How does he get the tree to do it? And how does that all work? And I realized well, this is what they they teach in, in advertising school. So sometimes you can find that that uh, where they've learned because ultimately truth is truth. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens is people sometimes they take a truth and they they smear other things on it that uh, maybe greed motivations, fear motivations. They put other things on there that don't belong there. And that's where there's a problem. 
you, what is godly wisdom? I want to use wisdom. Proverbs 9 1 talks about the seven pillars of wisdom. What are they? Well, James 3 <clears throat> 17 gives you the seven pillars of wisdom. It says it's first of all pure, peaceful, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality. It, it, it lays out the, the seven characteristics of that. So my marketing, in my opinion, needs to be in line with James 3.17 or the godly kind of wisdom. And, and the worldly kind of wisdom appeals to James 3.16, which is what he calls earthly, sensual, demonic even wisdom. And, and the lower nature was that, no, I that's the worldly thing will do that. But not everybody in the world does that. But that is the worldly wisdom is that way. Versus godly wisdom from above is James 3.17. So there's the clearest contrast I know is found in James chapter 3, verse 15, 16, and 17. You can see the contrast. And so I, I just have to say that not everybody who's not born again, who isn't yet to be a Christian, they're not all operating in an unethical way. I mean, I know some people that are tremendous people. that their Their word is their bond and all that kind of stuff. But what we typically mean when we talk about worldly is what you'd see in James 3.16. Ooh, I, I love it. By the way, before I comment on this, let me say this. What Mike just talked about, he's going to go deeper uh, at the Global Forum on, on April the 24th. Make sure you sign up for that. If you've not yet done so, go to nehemiahecommunity.com. Go to the events page, sign up for that. But let me read this for you. So Michael wrote this book, um, Rainforest uh, Strategies, The Plan and Most Successful business model. I have my copy somewhere here in my office or downstairs. And then, but here, here's the thing about this book. Um, so, so, so it was endorsed by Zig Ziglar. Um, it, was, it was also en endorsed by Victor Hayson, the author of, of The Chicken Soup for the Soul. Yep, uh, the book reveals the seven wealth secret of the rainforest and how to practically apply those truths uh, as that book gets tracked, so 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 Michael began using that book to take entrepreneurs deep into the rainforest on special business training and tours with lodging to kind of use, use the rainforest as a teaching illustration yep. Yep. of 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 business. So Michael, so here's what you're saying to us: nature. I'm at Romans chapter one, one twenty. You bet the hidden. That's things right. Are That's right. Nature. So you're saying. You don't have to be a Christian to understand, to see those insights in nature, but they don't necessarily always apply it to God. Yes, you, you don't have to be a Christian to see it or to use it. Romans one twenty yep. says that the hidden things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen being revealed by the things he made, even his eternal power and his divine nature. And I, when I went down to the rainforest for the very first time, I was sitting in my living room in 2000, and I think it was, uh, I'm trying to remember the year, it might have been 05, something like that. And I was praying and just seeking the Lord about something, and he invited me to go to Panama, the country. And I said, why? I don't know anybody there. And he said, it basically, it's about finance. And I said, okay, how soon do you want me to go? He said, make haste. So I did. Two weeks later, I'm down in Panama. And, and you know, while I'm there, I'm, I'm, he said, son, everything you need to learn about business, because I had no idea why I was there. He just invited me to go. I didn't know what I was going to do when I got there. And and so one day I'm I'm up in the mountains, Boquete, and and he says, everything you need to learn about business, you can learn in the rainforest. And I said, what now? I actually went to the front desk of the little inn that we were saying, I said, are they having a business seminar in the rainforest or something? And she looked at me like, are you crazy? <laughs> and so then I did some research later on and I found out, see, the rainforest is the most productive, the most diverse ecosystem on the planet. But yet it does that with very limited and poor quality topsoil. So the question was, God, how do you get abundance, super abundance, from relative scarcity? And the answer to that question, every business owner, every entrepreneur needs to know. That began the study. So I got home. I Googled it. Turns out that the CEO uh, emeritus of uh, Mitsubishi and another guy wrote a book called What We Learned in the Rainforest, Business Lessons from Nature. I thought, huh. It's not crazy to study this thing. So I made umpteen trips. I think five trips to Panama. I went to Belize, Barbados, Tobago, the upper Amazon. I went to the world headquarters for tropical research in the, in the Panama Canal with the Smithsonian. I mean, I went over and over and over and over again to study this thing firsthand to learn how he does stuff. And that's just from nature. And there's a lot of atheists that are studying that at the Smithsonian in particular, they don't necessarily believe in God, but they're showing me all the ways that this works and it's stunning and it's amazing. And I'm thinking, 
How would you want to do that and not know and not give attribution to God who made it all? You know, and, and so I love looking at the natural model as well as the biblical model. So I'm sure we'll talk about too. Oh, wow. I love it. I love it. So you've kind of just illustrated to us a practical example of how through nature we can see the revealed hands of God and how marketing. Now, so it seems like the fundamental difference between the unbeliever and the believer is that the unbeliever, not all, as you pointed out, some tend to go too far, sure. tend to try to, let's talk with it a little bit, because it's like using, you know, it's like using um, unnatural ingredients to fast track things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about that. So could you illustrate that for us, is that we, we know the principles work, but we just want to take it a little bit further. We want to yield to be somehow, could you illustrate that for us, uh, yeah. Michael? There's unintended consequences that happen. And just before I, I comment on that, I want to say this for your listeners, that if you take a hundred seedlings and you plant them in a field, in an orchard, and you come back five years later, of those 100, 100 of them will be productive, producing fruit and expanding the franchise, assuming that they got rain and sunlight and so on, the basic. But if you take a hundred entrepreneurs and you plant them in Chicago or New York or any any city you want to name, Paris or wherever it is, and you come back five years later, of those 100, only four of them will have the following three conditions met. They'll still be in business, they'll have at least one employee, and they'll be generating a profit. Mm. Four out of 100 versus 100 out of 100. So I said, when I realized that, I said, God, how do you do that? How, how, do, how do you have 100% success rate? How, how does that work? And what happens is in business, we they, we tend to think the, like trees, They the, trees are the perfect business model. They produce fruit. They have three kinds of marketing. They do educational marketing, information, inspirational marketing, and transactional marketing, and, and, and which every business owner needs to understand what that means. How do I market educationally? How do I market inspirationally? And how, what's transactional marketing look like? And what's the frequency? And all those things are in nature. I can talk about that another time. But what they tend to do is to say, I want the result of the 100% success, but I'm going to figure it out myself. I'm going to um, take whatever shortcuts. Uh, you know, but let me tell you something. Business, I was saying this to my wife this morning, a woman that I adore and I'm so glad to be married to. I told her, I said, you know, business is really quite simple. There's really three major broad stroke categories. Number one, you got to create value. Have something of value that people want. Well, that's a service or a product or an idea or whatever. You got to have that. Number two, you got to um, sell that product. You got to market, sell and market, both those things. You got to sell that product to somebody. So if you've got a great product, you built a great product, but you don't sell it, you're dead in water. And then number three, then you got to service that. You got to fulfill the thing you promised. And those three things are the, are, are the core of it. And what people tend to do is they want the shortcut. And so because they want the shortcut, they don't realize, for example, what does a tree do that a, maybe a business owner doesn't want to do? A tree will every day, it will release water into the atmosphere, which is water is a type of knowledge or information. And it'll also release oxygen, which is life-giving. It animates you, it's inspiration. And it releases that every single day through the process of photosynthesis. And so, and it also does a number of other things. And, and what business people tend to do is they want to shortcut that. I just want to put my product up for sale. Now, listen, I've done the math on this, okay? This is a scientific process. But the number of days or the number of times, if you will, that a tree is providing free information and free inspiration, in other words, water and oxygen, compared to the number of days in a year that it's actually um, trying to sell you something with a transaction with the flower and the fruit, depending on the, the species. But I picked the pomegranate because it's a Bible tree. It's, you know, they use Solomon wore the pomegranates. They had them in the temple. It was a big deal. So I said, what's the ratio? And the ratio is was uh, a number that was basically um, eh, three and a half to one, something like that. The, in other words, like it, which was about the similar to the ratio that you see on TV. If you watch an hour of television, you're going to have about 13 minutes of commercials. They'd love to do an hour of commercials and never have to produce a program, but nobody's going to watch. And they can't do only one minute of, of commercials because you can't pay for the program. So they found the sweet spot. Okay. And what but what people tend to do, as an example, they say, "I'm just going to promote, 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 promote," and 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 they're never they're not providing the value. They're not providing 
the things that make people want to, like, I'm really interested in this company because they did this for me. They, they shared their knowledge. They shared their information. They helped me in this way and they helped me in that way. And it's those things that they think are costs, but in fact, they are a form of marketing that breeds loyalty in people so that when they're ready to do business, they will do business. And the shortcut guy says, I don't want to invest in that. I just want to put a set, you know, promote one ad after another, after another, and people are going to burn out on you and go away. Wow, guys, <laughs> I could talk to Michael. Oh, listen, April 24th, we're going to have Michael with us. Uh, he's going to share with us, just teach, and then we'll have a Q&A time at our global forum on marketing and sales from a kingdom perspective. If you want more of Michael, visit his website, michaelpink.com, michaelpink.com. There you can grab all the resources he talked about from the books to other resources he has, but join us in April 24th. Michael, please don't leave yet because I've got one last question for you. <laughs> all right? uh, but before Michael shares this last insight, listen, if you enjoyed our podcast and you're saying, I want more of Michael, visit the website, michaelping.com. Uh, if you want to join us with Michael, visit us at the uh, Global Forum on April 24th. And if you were inspired by this, share this. You know, <laughs> friends share with others, right, what they love and enjoy that was helpful. I know you know entrepreneurs, you know salespeople, you know folks who you say, you know what, you need to hear this, that there is an, a kingdom approach to business. There is a way to look at marketing and sales in a way that's not distasteful, that's not used car salesmen, that is honorable, that allow you to sleep at night, and that allows you to honor and glorify the Lord. So share this. Put it on your Facebook, on your Twitter, on your all your so we give you a free license to share this as far and as wide as you can. And of course, we encourage you to, to follow us as well. And if you want to know more about Nehemiah Entrepreneurship Community, how we can come alongside you, provide you with training, coaching, and access to capital from a kingdom perspective, visit our website, nehemiahecommunity.com. There you'll learn about our training program, our coaching program, our access to capital program, and by the way, how to become a member of the community. Membership does have its benefits. You'll join one of the fastest growing Christian communities where we have members from Asia, Africa, Europe, Latin America where we are together trying to build kingdom companies. So join us today and get involved and get engaged. Michael, last question. There are people who are watching and listening from all over the world. There's, in the US, we have political instability with you know, the, the stuff going on with Washington, uh, Ukraine, war, Israel, uh, Haiti, inflation all over. And, and right now, people are holding tight to their money. And they're saying, Michael, my business is struggling. I'm struggling to attract and retain customers in this new reality environment. What advice would you give me, Michael, so that I might be able to navigate my way into cash flow in these sure. uh, uncertain times? Sure. Well, here's something powerful. Fear invites and instills fear. So when you're fearful, your prospects, your potential customers become afraid to do business with you, number one. Secondly, there is no reason to fear. There is absolutely a very real possibility of disruptions. Jesus even said, go went so far as to say wars and rumors of wars. So those things happen, but I happen to believe in a victorious mindset, meaning that I'm, I see the disruptions that are threatened and that are most likely coming as massive opportunities. Say, Lord, how do you prepare me? How can I be prepared for the shift that's going to happen in the marketplace when there's a bit of shaking and all the stuff falls to the ground? I don't want to be one of the ones that's hiding in the mountains. I want to be one of the ones that's that's uh, positioned to take advantage of that. And one of the ways you position it is to have a, a mindset of, of an expectation of, of good, of victory. If you're fearful, you're going to make people fearful. But if you're confident, that attracts people that are thinking, I want to do business with somebody who exudes a, a, a calmness and a confidence. I don't know if they're, what they're trusting, but whatever it is, I feel good about that person. And that, my friend, when you get a hold of that, when you get a hold of the presence of God, the G, when you get a hold of that and you begin to walk in the confidence and the faith of Jesus Christ, people will be drawn to you like moths to a flame. They're going to like, I want what you've got. And 
it's confidence that inspires confidence. And when people have to have stuff, they're going to say, I'm going to do business with this guy because somehow this lady, this person, this man, whoever it is, they have a confidence that gives me confidence that I can do business with them. And so I would say, don't get caught up in the fear. Expect victory, even though I know, or I believe I should say, that yeah, there's tumult and there's troubles times. But did you know in Daniel 9, 25, for example, where the angel comes to Daniel and he's talking about the 70 weeks. And, and when he gets to the 62 week thing, he said during the 62 weeks, the, even the wall will be built in troublous times. And, and of course, that's all been historical fulfilled. I understand that Ezra, Nehemiah, all that were in that. But the word times there is not the word time chronologically. It's the Aleph Tav. It's the the imprimata or the insignia of God himself. It's the Alpha and Omega. It's the the first and last letter of the alphabet that are there that are in the scripture 10,000 times, but only translated about 200 times because it really means God is here in an incognito way. And what that's saying is in troublous times, I am here and I'm with you. Put your hope and your trust in Jesus Christ and be bold. Don't be somebody that's scared by the giants. Don't be somebody that says, but there's so many big people there. So what? Be like Joshua and Caleb had a different spirit. Be the spirit that Christ put in you. Be that and be have an expectancy of victory instead of fear and disaster and doom. Even though those things may well happen, don't you be in the crowd that's numbered among those that are fearful because you won't you won't be able to take advantage of it. That's where I stand. Wow, Michael, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for your devotion and commitment to the marketplace, and thank you for your example. Listen, join us April twenty fourth. Oh man, As Michael will share with us this and the whole lot of other good stuff. In the oh. meanwhile, if you want to buy more Michael, visit him at michaelpink.com. There you can get some stuff, but still join us because Michael will give us some great downloads on April. But Michael, could you pray for our people uh, yeah. as we close out? I'd love to. So, Father, right now, I thank you that we can approach you in the name of Jesus. You've not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and a sound mind. You've given us the victory, even our faith. And this is the victory that is the faith that we have in you. Christ in us. Christ in the people I'm praying with and praying for right now. The hope of glory. It is that. I pray, Father, that our eyes of everyone watching and listening to this later will be upon you and look to your promise. Look to what it says in Isaiah. <clears throat> when when you, when he talks about uh, not being uh, basically not being afraid, but having our hope set on you, and our our keeping our mind ke in, in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. So, Lord, I pray that my brothers and sisters that hear this later will put their attention on you and their confidence, and just say, you know what, it's going to be exciting. Lord, where do you want me? Where do I get to play in this thing? Where do I get put me in the game, Lord? Put me on the field. I don't want to sit in the sidelines. Lord, help these men and these women. Have that courage and say, I'm in. Put me in, Jesus. Put me in. I pray that for my brothers and sisters on this call. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Asana, thank you. God bless you. Thank you, Michael. See you on 24th. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye.